Welcome back to uh, Imperial and uh, with me now is uh, Luke Howard uh, who runs our pulmonary hypertension service. Um, so uh, Luke, uh, we, you're a pulmonologist uh, and so uh, clearly you're in, in great demand at the moment, not just for your pulmonary hypertension practice but just as a lung doctor. Uh, so you've been helping uh, create a negative pressure ward. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, so one of the things that we think we may be needing in this COVID pandemic is uh, the use of non-invasive ventilation. So CPAP, for example, possibly bi-level ventilation, but probably not, uh, and, and possibly even high uh, nasal, uh, high flow nasal cannula. These are things tend to be aerosol generating. Uh, and so the general recommendation is that it's preferred that one does this in a negative pressure environment. Clearly, we've got lots of these negative pressure isolated rooms in infectious diseases wards, but these aren't very safe if you want to be managing a cohort of patients who need to be monitored. Um, so it's much better to create a negative pressure bay, if you like, uh, where you can, uh, you can have monitoring, you can have nurses who can roam between patients. And so in order to do that, uh, we've put in, uh, in each negative pressure area, two very large extractor fans, which are used for uh, asbestos work which have a filter in, uh, so you're able to suck air through the room, uh, filter it so you're not uh, chucking virus particles into the open atmosphere, uh, and that way uh, draw a large flow of area through, uh, through a large space that enables you to, to, to run a big uh, sort of high dependency unit with a lot of people on uh, non-invasive ventilation. Okay, so the nerds amongst us may be interested in knowing, is there a particular flow rate that you have to have before you can call yourself a negative pressure room? Well, in theory, yes. Uh, and in theory, I think the, the figure is that you have to replace the air in the room 10 times an hour. Right. Uh, now, our estates people have been fantastic. They've put these rigs up within a, a matter of days. Uh, and when you ask them, you know, how much flow does this create? So, well, we don't know, but this is the best we can do. We may be able to measure it, um, but you bear in mind a lot of people uh, in this country and other countries are actually doing CPAP in just standard environments. So I'm sure that we're protecting our staff more so uh, than by not. But actually, just being in that room, when you turn the fan on and you see the kind of the plastic sheeting that separates that area from the outside, there's a huge pull on that. Uh, so I'm fairly confident that we've got a, a pretty decent uh, flow. These fans are, are, are enormous. Um, we could try and measure it, and I hope that we will at some point measure it, uh, but I think what we're doing is achieving the best that we can. Great. One final question on this section, and that is uh, there is some debate about how effective CPAP is. It is a, is it a, a means to an unfortunate end or is it actually a means to a good end? Is it going to create better recovery? We really don't know the answer to that. Fortunately, at the moment, we're in this position where we have enough ICU beds and we are able to intubate patients early. I think one of the fears was that we were going to run out of capacity and we might need to use CPAP as a bridge uh, to uh, intubation and potentially those patients who would be intubated may not need it. It's looking like we don't need it now for that particular cohort of patients. Where we're thinking of probably using it uh, now is more in the patients where it's a ceiling of care. So you, you say, unfortunately, um, uh, uh, mechanical ventilation is not going to result in a good outcome and we can perhaps support people uh, a little bit. So particularly, for example, renal dialysis patients who've got already got one organ failure, but it's chronic organ failure, um, they're not going to particularly do well on ICU. It's those sorts of patients we might be looking at using uh, this on. Great. Thank you very much.